talked about soaking, and I'm not putting soaking down, but we're going to a new level. Yeah. We're going to a new level where you don't just walk, walk out and it washes off. When you walk out, something's different in your life and in your, in your thinking. Something's different when you get home. Something's different with the way you view the world. That's what happened today. War was done. Things were taken care of. The enemy was defeated. He was pointed out and defeated. We didn't just do this because that's what we do is pray. We did this because the Lord said today, I'm dealing with Mexico. The Lord said today, I am dealing with Frisco. The Lord said today, I am dealing with Texas. We got to be a part. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that we were in position to be a part of what he's doing in cities and states and nations. Just from this, right here in this room, we got to be a part of legislating what he, the king, is doing right now in these places. And Lord, I, I just, I got to thank you. I thank you for that. I thank you that we're not just, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of little people living in little towns in Texas and we just had a good weekend together. No, you pulled us together to take care of business. You pulled us together for a life-changing revelation and shift, but also in the midst you said, do this right now. This is where my finger is. I'm about to do something. Yeah. Agree. Be my voice of agreement. And yeah. the thing is, when we're part of that, it literally affects our lives. The victory that's coming in these nations is going to be a victory in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Nothing done here today was wasted. Every bit of it was legislative. Every bit of it was on his heart. Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you for opening our eyes and giving us broader understanding. Yeah. Broader understanding of why we're alive, why we come to meetings like this, why we do these things. Yes. It's about your agenda. Yeah. I've had it with the earthly agenda. Yeah. That thing is done. That thing's being twisted. I see him twisting that thing like a rag. And we got to be on we got to be on one of those hands twisting. Yeah. I love that. He yeah. is twisting it. He is he's twisting. You know what? Let's just let's just get violent. He's twisting the head off that thing. Like you snap the head off a chicken. That's exactly what he's doing. So, Lord, I thank you that we got to be a part of that. I thank you that our lives are changed forever. And this nation is changed forever. Forever. So, you know what? Don't be shocked when light starts getting turned on and some really ugly, nasty things start coming out. I'm telling you that. Let me just say that right now. As we head into 2020... Don't be shocked. Today, some things were set into motion that are going to uncover some really nasty stuff that's going to have to come to the light to be swept away. It was dealt with today. So when it starts coming out and it actually starts hitting news, all you got to do is say, my God, you did it. And I got to be a part. Thank you for letting me be a part of what you're doing in this nation. But brace yourselves. We, we got some fun ahead. We got some we got some fun ahead. Yes, we do. But I think I think I'm released to do this message today. <laughs> I've been asking the Lord since yesterday. Like we'll do whatever you want. Just let me know. But I did. This is how I want to hear it. Let's deal with one more snake before we go, because this one has to do with more of the in church snake Come on. than the outside the church snake. Come on, girl. And you know we we talking about. What we're doing this weekend is we're dealing with things that have been weighing us down and anchoring, anchoring us so we can move on. We've dealt with a lot of personal stuff. We've been talking about threshold wars come from everywhere. But this one can be inside the heart of the one that calls themselves a Christian. So let's – it's it's the power of accusation. Come on. And this is a message I heard probably in back in the spring. We were – my mom and dad and I were going somewhere, and dad had a podcast playing. And it got, I don't even know if it got halfway through the message before I couldn't hear anything else he was saying because I saw it at work. Not not only against me, but I saw myself perpetrating it against other people. Mm. And this also, this power of accusation helps me understand, this is my personal belief, why we have seen some ministers, some people that we all loved and followed that suddenly died out of nowhere. Still not made sense to this day. Some people that we have lost over the last probably 10 years. And this made a lot of sense to me. But it 
also explained some unbreachable barriers we've breached individually in our lives and in our families' lives. But let me start here in Revelation 12. If we read 10 through 12 and then skip to 17. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devils come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. And verse 17 said, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, which is symbolic of the church, and went to war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the highlights of this are for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them day and night. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that's you and me. And of the sea, for the devils come down unto you, having great wrath. Oh good, because he knows his time is short. And may he made war with her seed. And I love that. The ones which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is talking about us. In the book of Revelation, those that are on the earth right now. And the accuser of the brethren, he accuses us day and night. It's just his job. It's what he does. He accuses us day and night. And because of his anger, he continues to accuse day and night. That's what he does. And the, But this, this is the problem we're going to talk about is him accusing. But I had a thought when I listened to it. I thought, but the devil has been defeated. So why is accusation an issue? And here's why. It's because it's about agreement. He can accuse us all day, every day. And it's just, you know, it could be it could be noisome, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Here's what's going on is the devil is looking for agreement from those that have more power than he does. And who is that? Every one of us sitting in this room. We have more power than him. And so if he can get us to team up with him, mm -hmm. then we got a situation starting to develop. Yeah. That's why the power of accusation is such a big deal. And if he can get us, here's, here's the tool. We know where the tool is, right? If we can think it, but if we say it with our mouths, that's where the issue begins to super develop. And why is that? Well, let's look at this real quick. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Yeah. Proverbs 11, 9. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. Proverbs 15, 4 out of the message says, Kind words heal and help. Cutting words wound and maim. Wow. So that's just a little bit the talk. And there's a lot more about the tongue in the Bible and the power of our words in the Bible. But this is why accusation is an issue. Like I said, the devil can rant rave all day long. Bless his little heart. But if he can get a Christian hooked in to verbally rant and rave with him, it begins to build a wall. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, the thing is, I like to put it this way. The, the epitome of this is you, we can either use our powers for good or evil. Oh. Yeah. That we can either use our words for good or evil. Right. And I think a lot of times just because it's part of our, our, culture to mouth and you know say something funny or or just something bothers us like mom was saying the other night you know sometimes murmur is just there that you wake up with murmur you know you wake up on the wrong side of the bed you need to say something about it Come on. but the thing is god created our words to be powerful for a reason so we're either using them for good or for evil depending on the heart of the matter and here's what accusation does. It builds up the power of a demonic force through agreement against you or a church. And our enemy is looking for those that carry that power to agree with him. And his wrath, right? He has wrath because his time isn't forever. He doesn't have forever to do this. But here's the things that it can cause. And this is why I go back up to the top and say, to me, this makes sense why we have lost some real giants. Because the things that can, accusation can cause are sickness, yeah. burdens, yeah. bondage, Amen. complacency, ineffectiveness, a sudden halt to progress. Yeah. Does that sound familiar to anybody? 
And that's just to name a few. I'm not, it's not a comprehensive list. And unless it's dealt with, then you won't go any further or you'll start going backward. It'll start getting worse. So let me get a little bit, a little bit more definition and accusation. And it's literally, when I say a spirit of accusation, what we as Christians do is accuse. We claim that someone's done something wrong or illegal. We might not know the truth, but because we don't like that person and we heard something, sometimes it's really easy to mouth it and really easy to, to tell somebody else of what you know. You know, you know what they're like. Criticism, an opinion or judgment that's wrong or bad about somebody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Slander, saying something false or malicious that damages somebody's reputation. Again, sometimes they do, they don't have a great reputation and you don't really like somebody and it's really easy to slander yeah. not knowing the truth, which is rampant in our nation right now. And it's really easy to fall into that humanistic spirit that is going nuts in our nation. And as Christians, what are we doing? If we're not speaking the opposite, if we're not speaking life, if we're not speaking God's intention, we are acting in the humanistic spirit. And what is that doing? Again, because we know who we are, because we are bought by the blood of Christ, we do believe, we, you know, we come to church, we're excited about what God's doing, but man, I'm going to go home and I, so-and-so, did you see, did you see how they were dressed today? Did you see how they looked at me today? They are so-and-so and so-and-so. Slander, I don't even know the person. But I didn't like the vibe I was getting, so I started to slander. Gossip and rumors, skepticism, bitterness, resentment, and offense, all of these things are accusation. And all of these things, unfortunately, unless, you know, unless anybody in here is a nun or a monk, then I, you know, I have a feeling some of us have done it. I'm going to raise my hand. It's been an issue. But all of these can build a force against someone or a church. It's not just one particular person. It can build a force against an entire church. Now, does that make sense? How many churches have we seen pop up, thrive, and absolutely die within the same year? I begin to wonder. I begin to wonder what happened. Here's how it works, though. It's not, it's not just you say something, you see you, some, something happens, you say it one time, you forget about it. The problem is repetition because our words build a force. And if once we repeat it, you know, somebody aggravates us. Something at church happens, and we don't like the way they do something. So every Sunday at lunch, we begin to discuss how that is not working. Why won't these people, why won't these pastors get it together? This is not working. And then we discuss it with our family. And then in turn, they begin to discuss it with their friends that they go out to lunch with next week. And then all of a sudden, there is a demonic force being unleashed against a body. It also happens against individuals. It's that repetition. It's that every time it's your favorite sore. Every time the scab falls off, you got to rehearse it until the scab comes back. But in the meantime, a force is being created against someone, and they have no clue. That's right. Unless the Holy Spirit reveals it. So when an issue is rehearsed and it's rehearsed and rehearsed multiple times, then day after day after day, it's fuel on that fire. And the enemy's loving it. He's just stoking. Because all he has to do is throw a little hint out there for us, and we'll pick it up. Because he knows. He watches how we react. He watches how we, what we say and what we do in certain situations. He, he minimizes. That's how he gets to us the most. He's not allowed unless we let him. All he has to do is watch our behavior because we live in our mouths all the time. He's very good at paying attention, little sucker. So, you know, that my... I don't have to go into examples. You can think of things that are accusation, skepticism, gossip, <laughs> and rumors. Been there, done that. And some things might be true, you know? There actually might be some issues. But the problem is this rehearsal and these words compound the issue that's there. Because what it is is it's building a wall around it where it can't escape. And so once we go on and on and on and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, you're locking somebody into their issues. Come on. Because you're just, you're, that's, what's, that's the thing that's painting the picture. They are so this way. They are so this way. And then you're aggravated they haven't changed. Well, my word. There's been a wall built around them where they can't change. Mm -hmm. They're stuck in that position 
We're not speaking words of life. We're speaking words of death. They do compound the issue, and words are intended to make a difference. That's why we were. That's why the Lord stresses the power of life and death is in our tongue. It's not just a pretty poetic proverb. It's real. And I'll tell you right now, I'm guilty of that. It's like I've quote, been quoting that one, since, you know, forever, but not realizing what it's saying. It's like my because so and so aggravated me. So let me get this out. And then let me say, bless their heart, and it'll all be fine. Yeah. Because, you know, we do that here. Come on. We, we accuse, we gossip, we slander, and it bless their heart. Yeah. That's not repentance. <laughs> that doesn't turn the thing around. That compounds it. And I'm very guilty of the bless your heart thing. But let me say an important side note is the opposite of accusation is intercession. Mm. That's one good reason we know accu the accusation is such a horrible thing. The opposite is intercession. The devil accuses, Jesus intercedes. There's our picture. Instead of accusing, criticizing, gossiping, and leaving it there, it needs to be turned into intercession. You know, this doesn't mean we walk away from here and automatically we stop accusing and we go straight into intercession, but we can catch right in the middle of the sentence. We can break our words off of somebody and turn it to intercession for their good. So, you know, open their eyes or your grace is powerful. Your grace is sufficient for what they're dealing with. And your grace is sufficient with my trigger. It's sufficient to heal me of my triggers with this person. And like I said, in the South, we say, bless your heart. But that doesn't work. That's, that's not repentance, anything like that. That's not going to save a life. That's just our way of, but, you know, that's part of being a text. But let me say this. Another reason, that, that's the simplicity of this message is just realizing our words have power and realizing as Christians we we really can send somebody to their grave early yeah, we can. if we constantly speak death. Yes, we How can. sick so, is yeah. that? Yeah. It's absolutely sick. We can send a church to foreclosure on, with our you. mouths. Thank you. And it's like, did the Lord tell you to do that? No, probably not. Probably not. If it's a church of Satan, well, it's still intercession. It's still we go to intercession and fight like the Lord tells us to fight. We don't stand back and go, well, da, 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 da. you know, it's, it's about what is the Lord saying? What is the Lord telling us to do? How do we handle this situation? It doesn't matter that you've got five churches lined up in the row on one block. That's just Texas. It doesn't mean that we start bad mouthing the one next to ours where if they weren't there we can have more parking spots you know what i'm saying it's like how many how many churches how many pastors have lost their spouse over accusation how many you know i mean how many families have been torn apart because of accusation and it's about our words our words are meant to create life and change situations yes there is power Power of death and life in that tongue. My word, and we walk around like it doesn't really, really doesn't have any power. We can flippantly say it, and it's no big deal. Well, if you're saying it every other day, have you realized? Have you realized you are pitting a demonic force against someone? And I'll tell you another reason, a couple of reasons why this message has <coughs> changed me is number one, like I said, back in the spring when we heard it, about halfway through it, I a face comes before me. And I thought, oh, God. And it was, it was about my words over them because it had just been a season, you know, and I, I'm sure most of you have a season with certain people that it's like, you know, when, you, when your eye starts twitching when they walk in the room, that's a key to watch your mouth. Yeah. And there was, there was a time when it just, I had let myself get fully aggravated Come on, say with it. someone in my life. You know, it wouldn't have been somebody that I was regularly around. Yep. Wouldn't somebody that I had to interact with every single day. Wouldn't anything like that. But this particular person would come in and out of my life, and every time it was just my head. Would, my eye would twitch, and my head would kind of go to the side. And it was, and I never said anything to them. But I got, I found whenever I had someone's ear long enough, it would just, you know, I mean, my oh, word, just ridiculous. And here's, like I said earlier, it's not that everything I said was unfounded. The problem is it all ended in, 
just need to grow up. They just, you know, they just need to quit being so self-focused. Yeah. It's like, that's where I was leaving it. And there was some sort of sick joy at the end of it. You know, it was like, well, they just need to so and so here. You know, and, I, and finally, I was listening to this message, and it was like, oh, God. You know, I mean, I couldn't even hear half of it because this person's face and I mean, I, we were in the van, and I immediately started repenting. I didn't even hear the four steps that the guy gave at the end, which we'll go over. I didn't hear the four steps. I, I beat him to it because I thought, my God, how, who am I? Who am I when I could be blessing this person? And then I'll tell you what. This all happened. I started breaking my words over them, asking God for forgiveness for this ridiculous, becoming aware of the power of my words and the power of accusation. And about, I think it was maybe a week or two later, I get word that this person, I get word of, of what's going on in their life, and that this person has almost come to an enlightenment, enlightenment, it to the point that my mouth is open, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, Do you remember breaking your words off of them? And I thought, God, you know, I mean. And I'm not saying, you know, I don't know. I was going to say I'm not saying I'm the only one that had them in this condition, but it was pretty rampant in my speaking against this person because they just got under my skin. But all of a sudden, there's this shift, and everything I'm being told is a complete opposite of what I had known them to be. And even the tone of the things that were said, I thought, what? That's not even them. And it was so loud that I couldn't ignore it, and I couldn't ignore this message. I thought, dear God, the repentance that I had to come to is like, God, to think that I could have been a part of pushing them farther down this road into just frustration and, and, not, and, and not even being able to figure out their identity and, and dealing with what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Like, dear God, the thought that I could have been on the other side this whole time Blessing them with the intention of God in their life. And maybe seeing things come to fruition a little earlier than the wall I built up. So I couldn't, it couldn't ignore this after that. And then we went into this about a month or so at the church where, man, where did our lead intercessor fell and broke her hip? Then our, uh, the apostle over our church. His mother had dealt with cancer. They went through that, got that dealt with. All of a sudden, now we're back to a cancer threat. Then his wife got a tumor in her leg for the fourth time that was going to have to be removed surgically. Then the kicker, his four-year-old grandson was diagnosed with cancer. At that point, I thought, okay, that's it. So we went and sat at the staff. We had our staff meeting. I presented this at the staff meeting. It's like, something's up, y'all. Something is up. And my pastor said, how soon can you share that message? And so we talked about a spirit of accusation against our body as a whole. Because give me a break. You know, it's bad enough. Adults dealing with it. But you find cancer in a four-year-old? Oh, no. We're not having that. And so we went, we did this. We went through this message. And then at the end, we followed the four steps. There are four steps to dealing with this thing. And I had everybody come up, and we dealt with it as individuals because I, if I asked for a show of hands, I'm pretty sure most everybody in here could say that may be the issue that I'm facing and I didn't know I was. But then we dealt with it as a body. And I can tell you this. As of last week, we can't tell you where the people are coming from. And it's because our church had, well, let me add that too. Our church also had gotten to a point where even the regulars weren't coming. You know, it was like, okay, why are we doing this every Sunday? And as of last week, it was like, my God, something's going on. Because you can look across the room and see faces you knew. You're starting to see faces you haven't seen in years. And then there's faces that nobody has seen. Just starting to show up at the front door. And we dealt with a spirit of accusation. Because I, I know of some, I know of some of the accusation we've had as a body, but then also I, I know there's plenty I don't know of. 
And if we all says so all the pastors sat down and shared their stories, my word, we'd probably wonder how we hadn't shut the doors already. But by the grace of God, we made it to this point and then began to deal with this stinker, this stinker that has come from the body of Christ. And things have begun to break at our church. Things, of, things people have been, like our head intercessor is back. The apostle's wife that was dealing with the tumor, she's back. We're hearing good news about the four-year-old. Yeah, he's still dealing with this process of cancer, but two nights ago I dreamt his dad walked up to me and said he's doing so good. And I thought, I'm taking that. I'm taking that. And the thing is, is we dealt with an invisible force we did not know had built a wall against us as a body of Christ and was pushing us and pushing us to a point of what are we doing? So why, why is God not coming through? Why are we not seeing breakthrough like we know we should? And it was because of a stinker wall that had been built. And you know what? It, I, I mean, I've said stuff against my own church that certain little programs and certain ways that we ran things. And I was like, and you know what it boiled down to? I didn't want to do it. So instead of just backing out, letting somebody else do it, or just get in there and get it done, I mouthed. And so I had to break my own words over my own church to be set free myself, let alone set my church free of my accusations, of the wall I put them inside of. And so let me talk about, there's, there's four ways to deal with this then. And the first is to forgive and bless. Because with unforgiveness, we're not getting anything done. And see, that's because forgiveness is the opposite of cursing, right? So forgiving and blessing, because things won't change if we don't. And in blessing, we wash our accuser. We wash him with blessing and ask the Lord, bring them, bring them to freedom, Lord. Bring them to their intention on this earth. We bless them with your, your intention over their life. They're foundational for victory. And number two is realize and confess you do the same thing. That was number two. That This is actually from the podcast when he said that I'd already beat him to that point. Because <laughs> it's like, dear God, I've done this. And I don't want to do it anymore. Because accusation comes from offense and fear and worry and frustration and jealousy. So it's highly likely we've all done it. When our, when our button has been pushed. And if you don't confess, you won't have the authority to break it over yourself, yeah. which is a big deal. You break your words off of people. And here's, here's let me throw this in here. You need to forgive yourself. And in fact, I would start there first. You need to forgive yourself for accusing yourself. I think that's one that, that we can kind of get muddled in the church and in other individuals, but I think that's probably the biggest issue of all is we accuse ourselves. We look in that mirror every day and we've got something to say to that person in the mirror. The way the way that person acted yesterday or this morning getting out of bed or two weeks ago, we accuse ourselves more than we accuse anybody else. And the problem is there are power in our words. Maybe that's why we're stuck. Maybe that's why a certain physical issue has not cleared up. Maybe that's why a relational issue has not cleared up is because we're accusing ourselves. We're agreeing with the accuser of the brethren going, you know what, you're right. I am so-and-so and so-and-so. I am this, I am that. And then we wonder why all of a sudden we have a new skin infection or all of a sudden this thing just won't clear up. Where is the agreement? Where are we putting our agreement? That's number two. You gotta forgive, you gotta forgive yourself. But number three is be grateful. you got to take a minute to be grateful. And the reason being grateful is stuck in there is because that puts you in a right mindset, a right headspace. Because it takes you out of resentment. You can't be resentful and be grateful. Those two are not good. They're not good bed buddies. But if you take a moment, too, to just think of what has God done what has he, what has he told you? But more than that, what has he done in your life? You know, there's, he was and is and is to come. So what did he was? What is he is? Lord, I thank you for what you said is to come. 
it gets you right. It takes the stress out. Yeah. It makes it take a back seat. It gives you a deep breath when you take a minute to be grateful. And we can be grateful for what he's doing in other people too. Yeah. There's something important about being grateful, and I find it interesting that it's number three. Because number four is then you break the accusation off of you. You break the curses off of you. Once you've taken care of all these other things, you are set up for a release and for freedom. Because the thing is, accusation, y'all, it's witchcraft. It's witchcraft that's talked about in Galatians 5. This is Christian witchcraft, which means it's even more powerful. Because we are powerful. That's how God intended us to be. He intended our words to, well, my word, he intended our words to raise people from the dead. Yeah. He intended our words to open blind eyes and deaf ears. So this is absolute witchcraft. Use the other way. So you, that's the fourth thing you do is you break that mess off of you and you walk away from it. It's words that cause this, so we need to use words to break it. Wow. And if you don't break through, then you keep working at it. Because sometimes you're dealing with such a force that the first time through, you might have just taken its feet out from under it, but it's still laying there, still trying to crawl to you. And in two, here's the thing. You might be dealing with a bloodline curse that has been so predominant for generations and generations and generations you're the one to break through it. And it might not all happen in one moment. But no fear. You just keep walking it out. Because when you become aware that that's, a, that's something against you, that changes everything. That's it. And the reason it changes everything is because, number one, it changes your heart. And when it changes your heart, it changes your words. Therefore, it also starts to build a resistance to it. it what it does is it opens your ear to hear the Holy Spirit say, Someone has accused. You've been accused. Deal with this. That's the beauty of, of this thing. The Lord, I love it. But do you see why I say this to me makes me think some of the giants we've lost? Particularly because Christians can be so stinking nasty. Yes, they can. You know, we, we can be so stinking nasty. I mean, there are some ministers that we've lost over the last decade that it wasn't until this message that I started to get over it. I thought, this does not make sense to me when I know who you are. How could something out of nowhere or some yeah. crazy disease take this yeah. person out? That's it. And I'm not going to go into the, well, there must be sin in their camp and leave it like that. I'm not doing that. But this makes sense to me because these particular ministers, I've heard Christians go off on them. Like, you know, well, no, I don't believe that was the word. Please don't follow false prophets. And I'm thinking, Jesus, help me not accuse this person. You know, it's like, my God, this makes sense to me. This makes sense to me again. Like I said, while we have seen churches overnight success, they're done the next month. Or we've seen pastors fall. Come on. We've seen them fall into the most horrible stuff. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden the nation's like, see, that's why you don't go to church. It's like, dear God, we don't know what people in their congregation or the mega church in the next city over was saying. What right. were they, what force? Were they growing against this person? Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, too. That's why you can't go to, well, there may have been sin in the camp. There may not have been until this force started being built against them and them not being aware and not having people intercede instead of cursing them yeah. sent them down this path. Yeah. This thing is huge. Yeah. The spirit of accusation is huge, but our God is huger. Yeah. 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 You know, and he, the Holy Spirit, now that you, everyone in this room is aware, you're going to be able to deal with this thing when it comes yeah. to your porch. Yeah. You're going to be able to deal with it. And that, it, and I'm telling you, this thing isn't a one time and done. Yeah. This thing is that you start off, you deal with the buildup, and then as it starts to come, as you start to step into the powerful place God has for you, you better be aware. You better be aware that sick Christians are going to be out there mouthing like crazy. Out of their own ignorance, out of their own fear, out of their own jealousy, they're going to start mouthing. But the Holy Spirit's on your side. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord encamps about those that fear him. Yes. So as you move forward, we're going to, in fact, 
if we can, I think we have time to deal with this. Yes, we do. Let's deal with this. Let's go through these four steps together. And then once this is done, if you still feel like you need to deal with it later, deal with it. But be aware in the days to come because that's become, this has become a life changer for me. There have been moments that I'll stand there and something will come out crazy out of nowhere. And now I'm learning instead of freaking out to go, I'll go through these four steps. You don't know how many showers I have gone through these four steps. It's, that's a perfect place to do it. But it's just like, my God, wait, no, 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 no. And I've seen things change, y'all. I've seen things shift. Our church has shifted. Is everything perfect? Not yet. But we're working in all of it, and we're seeing healing, and we're seeing the promises of God, and we're seeing things manifest. And I personally am seeing things that have been normally stressors. All of a sudden, it's like, no, 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 no. I know what this stinker is. And I don't have, you know what? We don't ever have to know who said it because we're going to forgive and bless them. Yeah. You may know some of them, but we don't have to know all of them. We're just going to bless them with change and shift in their lives. So let's, let's do this. If you, especially, let me read the list again of what this can cause. Sickness, burdens, bondage, complacency, ineffectiveness, a sudden halt to progress, to name a few. So let's go ahead and deal with this thing together. Let's let's do it for individuals. And if you want to, if you want to go through these four steps together, can we all just come forward today? And ask Darren if he thank you so much. Play, but let's deal with this. I mean, we've been through a weekend of this has been a revolutionary weekend. It's been a shift. Everybody in here has had something either fall off of you, something get implanted in you. The Lord has been doing things. And this is just the final. Edge. When you walk away from here today, dealing with accusation, you're going to deal with it. It's going to come off of you. And y'all, the this, sky this is going to be brighter. You're going to be able to see things clear. And you're going to be able to hear the Holy Spirit better because that blockage is going to be dealt with today. No more witchcraft alive in your lives anymore. No more Christ, Christian curses are going to be able to affect you any longer. You're going to walk out of here free, and you're going to walk out of here blessed to move into the position, the door that is already open. We walk out one day, one door today, into another one. I see it. As we walk out of that door today, our new door is already open. And so today we are going to deal with this. And I am asking you, this was done with words. So as we do this, say it out loud. Forgive. And I'm not asking you to yell names out that you're going to forgive. But use your words because it was words that caused these issues. And so we are going to break it with words of life. So number one, we are going to forgive and bless. Lord, we forgive those that we know and that we don't even know that have said things against us out of anger, out of frustration, and out of jealousy. And Lord, I have even done things that were silly and made mistakes that people didn't like. But I forgive them for mouthing. I forgive them for saying things against me, Lord. And I, you know what? All right now, I just bless them and their household with your love, with your compassion, with your intention for their lives. Yep. I speak blessings. That's what this is about. Blessings to healing. Blessings to, to future hope. Blessings to physical healing, even in their bodies, God. I just release them right now to you. And number two, we are going to realize and confess we've done it ourselves. Lord, I have done this. I have done this, and I am asking for your forgiveness. And right now, I break my words off of people. Curse words of cursing. I break them right now in Jesus' name. That is not my place. My place is to speak life. And so right now, I speak life into those that have recently just and been an unfortunate target of mine. I speak life into them, into their situation, into yes. their bodies, into their families, and into their businesses. I speak life to them right now in Jesus' name because that is my job. That is my job is to see your kingdom come, not only in this nation, but in individuals. And so I speak life over these that I have, have cursed. And on top of that right now, break words of curse off of myself. Things I have said about myself out of frustration, 
out of fear, I bring them off right now. I am not going to be my fears. I am going to be what you have called me to be. Yes. And I am going to live the benefits of, of Christ on this earth. Yes. I am not going to live a curse. I'm not doing it. So it's broken off in Jesus' name. I'm not doing it anymore. And right now, here's the fun part. It's time to be grateful. Lord, I thank you. You have brought us to this place. You brought us to this place to be set free. Lord, we didn't, we didn't know. We didn't know what all you were doing. But because you're God, you did it. And because you love us, you did it. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you for every second of this weekend. Yes. Every beautiful word that you released over us. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that we really were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Lord, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for the people you put in my life to counsel. Lord, I thank you for your love. God, you're just good. I thank you that you have healed me. You have healed me in many ways. And the ways that are left are going to be healed too. I thank you for that, Lord. Just, it's just who you are. It's a benefit of being yours. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. And now I thank you. Here, here we go. It's time. Break the words off of you from us. It is time. Right now. Right now. Every curse that has been spoken over my life, over everyone present in this room. Every curse spoken. You are done. It's time to fall off. Family curses that have been passed on like a treasure. That thing is done. It's time to go into the fire. That thing is going into the fire today. Right now, blood curses are over yes. in Jesus' name. Curses in families. Curses to families that have been prosperous. It's over. Your prosperity will begin to grow again because the curse, the jealousy curses have been cut off. The anger curses have been cut off. It's yes. it today. We are being washed. This meeting is about washing. And we are being washed from accusations. From ourselves and others, we are being washed of everything that has stood in the way of that door that we are about to walk into. This is the last threshold. We talked about thresholds. This is the last one to cross over freely. To cross over freely into the destiny, into the beauty, into the awe that is ahead. So every single word of curse is broken today in Jesus' name. It stays here. It is ash at your feet. It is ash at your feet. You are free today to move forward. No more shackles. No more weight. You're free to move forward into the things of God today. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you. Take a deep breath. This thing, this thing has been dealt with. Yes. A final memory, a final push over that threshold. No longer are you held back. I see chains that were on your back you didn't even know had fallen off today. Cords that had you bound. Every time you walked forward, it was like you could not get past one step. Those cords have been cut today. All of that is over. I'm telling you, I keep seeing it. We're walking out that door and we're walking into the new door that's open. There's a new door open for everyone present. It's a new door. It's a new opportunity. It's a new life. You are walking into a new life this weekend. And it hasn't just been for pretty words. The Lord has put his finger on some things this weekend. And he has said, enough. Now, go this way and do this. It's ready for you. Just go. You are free. I'm telling you again, you are free. And if you don't feel it, go over these steps again. And if you want me to email you these steps, I will do it. But it's time. You're free. I'm telling you, you're free from curses. You're free from all this. You are free. You are free to move forward. And in fact, let's just do that prophetic thing we like to do. Take a step forward or a couple of steps. And look, there's nothing holding you back anymore. There's nothing holding you back anymore. This is real. This is real. This thing is done.
going to let you go back to your seats for a few moments, but we're going to bring you forward again.